Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim discusses the rise in the 10-year yield and historically what that means for the stock market. Jim, 10-year yields are up nine straight weeks, the longest such streak in over 28 years. What are your thoughts? Yeah, what's been happening with the 10-year yield has been extraordinary if we look at the first chart. If you go all the way back to the week of August 5th, yields have been up every single week for nine weeks. Now, there was a week in there, the week of August 12th, actually, that was only up two basis points, but it was up. And last week, we're recording... Um, we're recording on October 4th, so the week ending September 30th, the quarter end, it was up 14 basis points um, for that week as well. So this is something that we haven't seen, as you mentioned, in quite a while. And what happens next? Well, if we go to the next chart, let's talk about how extraordinary this is. This shows you the streaks of rising yields in the 10-year. So you can see that it's got a horizontal line at nine and we just hit nine. The last time we saw this was the nine weeks ending April 1st, 1994, 28 years ago. And before that was the nine weeks ending October 16th, 1987. And then before that was, it actually extended to 12 weeks. Uh, and that was the longest streak ever in 1984. So this is only the fourth time in 41 years, because this chart goes back to September of 1981, the start of the great bull market in bonds. So over that, in I've argued actually it ended in 2020, but since that period, uh, the, the this has only happened four times, three other times other than this one. So what we're seeing in the bond market has been quite extraordinary. And what does it mean? So if we go to the next chart, and the next chart is the stock market. The stock market really has not performed well at all during this period. It peaked the week August 16th. The, the week of August 5th is when this streak started. Give the stock market two weeks to figure out we were in a higher yield environment. And it's been falling all throughout this and it's been accelerating. I would argue to you that what we're seeing here is we're at the point now that the stock market can't take higher rates anymore. So that the nine week period we've seen now, we've set new, you know, nearly two year lows in the stock market through last week. Uh, let me go with history before I talk about what's happening the week we're recording. The week ending April 1st of 1994, the following week, the stock market was down 3.2%. Now that doesn't sound like a lot by his, today's standards, but that was the biggest weekly decline in the stock market in three and a half years. The prior time that we had nine weeks ended before that, it's the week ending October 16th, 1987. The following week was the stock market crash of 87. October 19th, Monday, October 19th, the stock market was down 22%. It's worst one day in history, and it finished that whole week down 12%. And prior to that, the market the bond market did rise in yield for 12 straight weeks into May 25th, 1984. But from week nine to week 12, the stock market fell every single week, all those four weeks. And combined, it was down 5% over that four-week period. The bull market, the great bull market in stocks began in August of 1982. That was the second worst correction to that point. Only February of 84 was larger. So what is it that I'm trying to say? When do you get to a nine-week move like we've seen in yields? The stock market can't take it. If yields go up, it crashes, and then it stops yields from rising. That's what happened in 94. It's certainly what happened in 87. And to some extent, you could argue, depending on your definition of crash, that's what happened in 1984. It just it kept selling off as yields went up. Now, that brings us to this week. We're recording on Tuesday afternoon, October 4th. The stock market is roaring ahead of 5%. But what else is happening, too, is yields are down. At one point yesterday, the five-year yield, to switch my maturities a little bit, was down 30 basis points intraday. So the stock market did not have to crash to get yields to stop going up. They did it on their own. And the stock market is responding with a huge positive gain. So what does that mean? Stocks are lagging indicator bonds. They're not always going to be a lagging indicator bonds, but they are now. If bond yields 
stopped going down, and they have been for Monday and half of Tuesday. I think the stock market stalls. If they bond yields start back up, and remember, later this week, we get the payroll report. Maybe it's another hot payroll report. They've been more than likely, more times than not, the payroll re reports have been coming in stronger than expected. But maybe what we see with the payroll report is another hot number. We see a big rise in yields. Stock market won't uh, handle that well. I think we're at the breaking point for the market, the stock market, when it comes to rising yields. The reprieve this week is yields are falling on their own. The stock market didn't have to crash like 87 or 94 in order to get yields to stop rising. But really what it does tell us is the center of the universe is the bond market right now. And again, I'm not saying that because I'm a bond guy. It is this now. It is now, and it will continue to be, at least for the in, the near-term future, if not the intermediate future. And the direction of interest rates is going to do, determine the direction of a lot of other things. Right now, the direction of rates is down, and so the stock market's taking it well. If that reverses, I would expect the stock market to reverse as well. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.